But what I would always do is I would always think all of the people before me who have done stupid things, this too, it's okay. If they did it, you can do it. I'm pretty stupid. Here I am. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. We're just doing a, a little Q&A today. If you've watched my last video, you'll know that I am moving to London next year. So I feel like a lot of my content will sort of start surrounding that and like that transition. But um, it, we're just having some summer fun right now. We're just gonna do a little Q&A. Thank you guys <laughs> Thank you guys for sending in your questions. I, I appreciate it. If you could study abroad at another university, where would you go? <laughs> so I actually, I can, reveal this now. I'm actually going to UAL next year. So I got into their master's in television program at the London College of Communication and that is where I'm going. That's what I'm doing. I am thrilled. I did apply to a few schools but like that's just <laughs> something I want to keep private for myself. I never in a million years thought that I would get into their program. It's the only like filmy program that I applied to and I just it was kind of like a long shot and I just it was such a whim of an application but it was like also the school in my heart that I was like man that'd be really cool if I got in there and I got to do that so yeah that's where I'm going next year uh, when I move to London that's what I'm gonna be doing I'm really really excited but if I could study abroad at another university like where would I go I think that if I could like do my study abroad over again when I did my year abroad in Scotland I sort of had this idea in my head already where I was like I am going to move to the UK like I kind of had that in my brain already where I was like I think I would really like this place Place. I don't know. I mean, I love Scotland so so much, but like I think I'd choose Italy. You know what I mean? Like looking back if I had to pick it would be Italy. Okay advice on how to Maintain the lifestyle mood of living abroad after returning home when I came home I sort of like had to buckle down for school But I was really trying to like keep that energy up and I did find it so much easier to say yes to things that I like normally wouldn't have when I was busy in the past because like when I was when I was like really really busy with school in the past like I would pretty much neglect any of my other needs kind of <laughs> which sounds bad but like yeah like I was just I was so focused on the future and like doing well that like I often just didn't prioritize going out and doing things which I think was like to my detriment keeping up the energy of like saying yes and I don't know like when I went abroad like it just sort of like cracked something out like else new in me where like I just realized that there is this part of me that like really loves talking to new people and doing weird things like with my time like having new experiences like that is what makes my life feel really fulfilling is if someone's like oh do you want to go to this thing that you've never done before I'm there no matter what it is it's just like keep that open mindset going and that's that is like what served me the most why do you choose london over going back to edinburgh honestly the program that i got into i mean uh i am i have always wanted to go into the film industry i just didn't know how and i mean like that's clearly evident because of like my youtube channel but like i don't know maybe you wouldn't assume that about me and it's something that i kept to myself for like a really long time because it just seemed like something that was really unachievable and i think the further and further I got into my academic career the more I realized like I I don't know like the the older that I got the more I was like I think I could do that potentially but I just I had to take little steps towards it because that like big goal of like I two years ago I would have absolutely no skills to get into this program that I got into for television like I, I would have had no skills like the only reason that i got into this program is because at least in my opinion i don't actually know i mean it's just my own like hypothesis because i didn't go to film school i went to school for arts management and like english so that's not what i what i spent the last couple years doing i worked on one film set my sophomore year and that was like sort of my dipping my me dipping my toe in when the pandemic started i was like this is the first step i can take towards this i don't know if i'll even like it and then you know i started making videos and i knew that i always really liked making videos what was the point of this <laughs> i think i just went totally off topic anyway but um but then i got you know got into editing and i learned premiere pro and how to edit thumbnails and like all these other other pieces and i improved a lot over the past two years i feel like i had like a really big like sort of pit when i got into 
UAL because it just felt like like I had one plan because I got into like one school earlier and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm probably going to end up going there. And then I got into this school and I just remember like that week it was the strangest week of my whole entire life because I was just like, <laughs> You have this whole idea of your life planned out, like especially when you're applying to grad schools of like, this is how it's gonna go. These are the steps that I'm gonna take next. And then I was offered this like thing on a silver platter, it felt like, and I was just like, uh, what? <laughs> Like I, the end goal for me was always to like end up in London for a bit and like to try to work in the film industry And the fact that I got this like straight shot to that just felt so Illogical and that's probably like the imposter syndrome talking but <laughs> um, That's why I'm choosing to go to London because it just kind of like I also I'm sorry I'm like this is really going off on a tangent But like I also have spent the last couple of years like restarting my life over and over again And I'm kind of looking forward to feeling like I can settle down down in one place for a bit don't immediately have to leave and that is what's really exciting for me because I'm, I'm a bit tired of moving reading my life as like as much as that was my choice last year and the pandemic wasn't my choice but like I'm just like I'm looking forward to feeling like I can put roots down somewhere how do I move on from my study abroad experience I miss it a lot I don't know <laughs> I mean, honestly, like it, I still get like kind of upset when I look back at like videos of Edinburgh, like it just holds such a special place in my heart. It like still hurts. Like my friend, my friend Teresa, who was like in my videos last year, she'll post stuff on her Instagram, like missing Scotland. And I'll literally just like single tear, just like, I can't watch her stories when she starts talking about Scotland. Like I just can't do it. I think bringing it to you this year, I brought the energy of study abroad to my real life. And that has made me feel like a little bit better. Like it's still kind of like with me every day. If that makes that, you know, I always say that, if that makes any sense. <laughs> What's one event that changed your life? Like butterfly effect, if you know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> has anybody ever seen the Ashton Kutcher movie, Butterfly Effect? The stunning film. <laughs> My mind is going to like a lot of dark places. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, mm, let me skip that one. What's something you're excited for in the future? I mean, I'm like really excited to move to London. Yeah, I mean, ah, I'm like, I'm excited because like I just love the lifestyle that it can provide for me. I was literally just talking about this with my mom the other day. Like I'm so excited to be able to like wear like winter clothes again. <laughs> Cause like Charleston, that's where I live now and where I went to college. I am like not a summer person. It is currently summer here and it is disgusting outside. It is so, it's like 90 degrees every day and humid. It's so humid. And I do not like this kind of weather and it makes me want to stay inside, but I don't because it's good to go outside. However, I'm excited to be able to wear winter clothes and to experience like a full fall and Christmas time in London. I know there's like student deals for the West End. I'm so excited for that. Like catch me, get tickets to everything half price while I can. Honestly, what's changed? Okay, I'm going back to the butterfly effect question because it's like sitting with me. But honestly this year, like I have, oh! Okay, well new camera angle. So this year I had to get a random roommate from Facebook. I found this apartment on like Zillow.com from the Highlands of Scotland and I randomly like got a message. I got like messages from a bunch of people, but like this one girl, I just kind of liked her the best. Like I still wasn't sure because I've had, I have had such awful roommates. Like my first two years of college were basically just awful roommates. It's, it's awful dealing with that kind of stuff, like not good. And so I think that's like a butterfly effect for this year. Like I have had the best senior year because like I have this roommate and like we're just like best friends. Yeah, that's what I would say is my butterfly effect is me answering her message on Facebook because now we're besties. We're BFFs. Okay, advice for recent grads considering applying to grad school in the UK. Okay, well, hmm. So I would say apply early uh, because just because it's kind of like good to know because their application process is really long. So there's two application deadlines usually. It's like around 
November, October-ish early. That's when I was like first applying. And I just got all of mine out of the way because I just didn't want to deal with it. I applied to four schools and the ones that like I thought I would have a chance at, like I didn't get, in get into. And the ones that like I like di I never thought that I would get into, I got into. So like I would say just apply to a good amount. You don't have to do a million. Talk to your advisor, definitely. Think about like your lifestyle, like where you want to be in the country and like just give it, you know, and also apply to that school that you don't think that you would get into because that's what I did and like here I am. So <laughs> no, literally there was one night in October. I went to go visit my advisor and I had looked at this TV program at LLC like on my own over the summer, but I had like kind of just like brushed it off. But then I went to go talk to my advisor and she, I like briefly mentioned that I would be kind of interested in doing that one day. And she looked up this program and like typed it in the computer. And then she sent me a link to it later. And I remember just like looking at this like application for like a month. And I was like, there's no way, like what, this is stupid for me to even apply. Like I had to submit like a portfolio and like an, et, like all, like all of this extra stuff. And I was like, I don't even know. And I remember there was one night my room was going out and it was like a Friday night. And I was like sitting in here looking at my computer screen for like three hours trying to write this essay. Give yourself time and know that it's like still a lot of work. Apply to that school that you think is like out of your reach that you can't do. Like just apply to it. See what happens. Tips to have more fun and stop pr prioritizing productivity over everything. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, my little catchphrase um, that I say all the time from my life coach, Lisa, is um, Lisa says, have fun. Well, I think that like for me is that I have always been somebody who like takes myself really seriously. Like I have a sense of humor, don't get me wrong. I, like as a, like a seven year old, I was like, oh, like I'm... <laughs> I'm serious. Like, um, you know what I mean? Like I, I took myself very seriously. So I think allow yourself to take yourself seriously, but work on not taking yourself too seriously. Like life isn't that serious. And I think for me personally, it was better to come from a place of taking myself really seriously and learning how to not because it was like that part was already built in. Like I already, I already cared about a lot of stuff, but like I needed to learn to like kind of do the opposite and just like, you know, be young, wild and free. <laughs> because I think that like you, you should care. Like, I think that's like a really important part of life. And I always will think that, but also it's, it's also like not that serious sometimes. And that's okay too. What are the top three places I should visit in Scotland as an international student? Isle of Skye, Edinburgh, and then in one of my videos, oh, I cannot remember what it was called. I'm gonna look it up and try and put it on the screen or I'll put it in the description down below. But there's a video of my World Packers where I vlogged us going to this waterfall in the Highlands and that was beautiful. We went on this hike and I forget what it was called, but it was just like, it was so pretty. But I'd say anywhere in the Highlands that you can go, like Three Sisters is incredible. The town I stayed in for World Packers was called Kinloch Leven. That was a beautiful little town. I mean, it's like kind of tucked in between these mountains and then you can actually walk to the Three Sisters of Glencoe, like you're very close to it. And that was honestly, I mean, that it's not like a touristy town. Like it's this really like small little town in Scotland, but like I, it was just so beautiful. And we sat in this pub that had like the most incredible view and in, like I've ever seen. Um, are you through with campus? Yeah, I think that means college. What is your biggest life challenge right now? <laughs> Um, finding a place to live in London. That's what I'm most worried about at the moment, but I'm just not gonna think about that. Were you ready for home after two semesters in Edinburgh or did you want to stay for three? Honestly, if I could do college over again, look, I don't like to have regrets. And I don't know if I would have been ready for to move abroad when I was 18. I don't know. I mean, I that's just something I never considered when I was 18, but yeah, oh my God, I would have just like finished up my degree there, just kept riding on through. Yeah, I would have just, I would have just stayed forever. Like I loved it so much, yeah. What is your best advice for making friends in university? First week, do everything, talk to everybody because that's when everyone is most open and like wanting to meet friends and just like go to stuff and do stuff and just keep an open mind. That's what I'll say. I think that's like truly the best advice. And it's gonna be a lot. Like I, as an introvert, like I get overwhelmed 
pretty easily with stuff like that. And like after like a lot of going out events, like I need a minute to like just like sit in like a silent room, which sounds creepy, but that's true. Yeah, how to stay optimistic throughout studying. Um, I don't know. I mean, college is so hard sometimes and it really can like stress you out in so many different ways. But what I would always do is I would always think all of the people before me who have done stupid things did this too. It's okay. If they did it, you can do it. I'm pretty stupid and here I am. <laughs> no, I'm not. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm just saying like, you just have to have a little confidence in yourself and be like, well, if I feel like that having that attitude of like, I saw this interview of Jennifer Coolridge where she was like talking about like why she became an actor. And she was like, I just went to go see terrible theater productions. <laughs> and then I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. And like, as dark as that is, Look, there are a lot of unqualified people out here running around doing lots of things. Just keep that in mind. And also get enough sleep. That's my biggest advice. Ask for help. Get enough sleep, ask for help, pace yourself and you'll get through it. And you can only do your best and lots of love to you. Also, you're such a queen, so. What's one skill you've always wished you had, like any instruments? Oh, I think it'd be really cool to play the piano or like speak another language. But yeah, I just uh, have never been able to do that, but I really admire people who do. I think that's really cool. Are your future plans? Well, today, um, it's 10 o'clock right now. I'm gonna make a sandwich at 11, probably. Maybe go for a walk because my life is riveting. Film school, ah! <laughs> Which like, I think that, um, like it's one of those things where I'm like, uh, it'll be fine. But like, I definitely feel like imposter syndrome about everything. And I'm just like trying not to do that at all because it won't help me if that makes any sense. Like having imposter syndrome won't make me better. It will just like make me think I'm worse. So I just like have to try. That's what I'm gonna leave you all with is you just gotta try. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thanks for leaving your um, questions. Uh, I still like cannot believe that there are people who want to hear me <laughs> answer any of these questions <laughs> um, because of imposter syndrome. <laughs> we'll see. Give this video a like, comment down below if you have any other questions and um, yeah, thanks for watching.